welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is a review of pop-up number four from Blood Moon Comics. And in this issue, which wraps up the four-part adventure, Diane, Beth, and Sean struggle to escape the pop-up museum, which has come to life with every horror that you can imagine from all the different artifacts Diane has collected over the years. And will they all get out and survive? The short answer is no, but <laughs> we'll get to that one in a minute. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. Your attention is greatly appreciated. Uh, now let's get into the credits. This is pop-up number four from Blood Moon Comics, written by John Clark, who also did the cover and colors, pencils and inks by Matthew Pereira, and letters by April Brown. Uh, just to recap, since it's been a while since we've covered this particular series from Blood Moon, what happened? Well, when Diane uh, eagerly and... Uh, maybe even recklessly decided to get her pop-up museum ready for the big launch the following morning. She got her daughter and his and her boyfriend uh, to unpack all these artifacts from everybody from supposed witches to serial killers to uh, demon-possessed dolls and everything you can imagine. Unpack them all and get them all set up and ready to go for the big display. Of course, when you concentrate so much evil in one spot, what happens? Things come to life. Uh, Dolls go on murder sprees. Everything happens that you can possibly imagine and then some. So when we last left off, the trio of pop-up uh, you know, managers and, and family and friends got together and they were attacked by all the different uh, displays. And what happened was when we left them uh, most immediately, they were at attacked by essentially a big, uh, a big rug that was part of a um, bloodletting ceremony and the fibers and all the strings and the yarns came to life and tried to wrap them up and tear them apart. Now we pick up in this issue uh, that Sean manages to get his box cutter out and, and carve his way out of the uh, giant rug uh, that, that trapped them all. And he f helped uh, Diane and Beth to get free. And then he forced him into the next room, which unfortunately is where Ju the Judy doll was uh, located. The Judy doll comes to life and actually transforms into this giant sort of werewolf-like beast and begins attacking everybody, including Diane. Uh, Sean manages to get into the next room. Diane uh, is captured and pulled into another room by the two mannequins from the first issue. And Diane and, uh, and, and Sean, well, I was to say Beth. Beth is pulled into the next room by the mannequins from the first issue. Diane is left to fight the doll off by herself. She manages to quickly get away because the museum wants her alive because it wants her to help bring them um, into the public eye and to open their doors. So they want her to stay alive because they want to be exposed to the public and they're not, and they, so they're not going to kill her, but they're forced to sacrifice, but they want to kill everybody else. Diane gets away. She gets into the next room. She manages to free uh, her, herself from the werewolf monster that was, that used to be the Judy doll. She gets into the next room. She finds her son, not her son, her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend are both dead at the hands of the two mannequins from the first issue. Diane manages to fight her way through the mannequins uh, and smash her way through the a hole in the floor and then use a, a large pallet full of weapons like spears and axes, what have you, and knock out the uh, support beams that are holding up the floor so the whole thing can collapse. And the the entire museum starts to collapse in on itself except for the outer shell uh, but the monsters and the demons keep coming eventually diane makes it to the front door right in time for the grand opening with a line of people waiting outside at 9 a.m sharp and she tries to warn them away uh, but they don't believe her and then things go from bad to worse from there i'm not going to spoil it here but just let you know that uh, it doesn't turn out happy for anyone <laughs> not the attendees not diane not anyone so that's what happened before. That's what has happened now. What do we think? First impressions. Uh, overall, this was a this was an exciting kind of climactic way to end this four part uh, miniseries. Uh, their horror movies are are great when they have a happy ending, but they're sometimes even better when they have a bad ending. And this this uh, miniseries definitely has a bad ending for Diane in particular. Uh, so uh, John Clark he he got the pacing up. The action is is fast. The um, 
the the violence is pretty bloody, pr- pretty gruesome, not too gory, but gory enough that you get the idea that people are in a lot of pain and suffering for for what the the torturous ends that they come to, and the conclusion kind of has a nice little ironic twist at the end that uh, gives it a really uh, high level of satisfaction for the way the way the story ended up. So uh, what do we like about the story? Just overall, uh, it's this was a solid, solid horror concept from start to finish. Uh, John Clark sticks the landing, and so we like how this uh, kind of ends up. Uh, we There's a possibility that you could see more, uh, adventures is not the right word, but more stories centering around the pop-up museum in the future. Uh, we'll see how that goes because there's a little hint or a tease that, that maybe the museum will continue even if Diane is not the one who's running it. And so... Uh, this is a solid ending for a solid story, uh, concept-wise. What didn't we like about that? What, what didn't we like about the finale is, um, I think overall it was fine. If there's going to be a down point to the, the story, it's really sort of in the art realm, and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's talk about, well, let's talk about the art now. Uh, the art uh, was okay, but there, because this is so fast-paced and there's a lot of action going on, Pereira needed to nail the... Uh, how the characters are moving, the action choreography, how they were quickly moving from one room to the other, how their fights were turning out, and how uh, how things were happening at a very quick pace. Didn't quite nail it. Uh, it was just a little too sloppy. The lines were a little bit too loose. And the choreography was either too stiff or didn't quite arrange itself in a way that you could easily follow what was happening. You, you had a lot of panels, especially at the end, a lot of panels with Diane, who was the central character still... Um, taking action, but the way that the mannequins were moving and how, and how they were, how they were chasing Diane around just sort of didn't work. It would have been better if, you know, there's a little bit more attention to the choreography of the action. And so it just didn't quite land well. So you, you kind of get what's happening, but you almost sort of have to, to sort of pay attention to where Diane ends up and, and not to pay too closer attention to the choreography, which is a bit of a downer. Uh, so final thoughts on pop-up number four, from Blood Moon Comics. This was a solid end to a, a solid horror concept. We like the idea of a museum that comes to life because there's too much of a concentration of evil. And because it is a popular museum, that means it has the opportunity to move around if it's placed in different hands. And so there's a, the potential for more stories. And the ending is not a happy one, but, but it's a satisfying one. So overall, we're going to give pop-up number four from Blue, Blood Moon Comics a solid 7.5 out of 10. Hope you enjoyed this review, but before you leave, please like, share, comment, subscribe to Comical Opinions, hit that bell for notification, and you have a great day.